Welcome to this month's edition of RTO Insights, brought to you by APRO, the Association of Progressive Rental Organizations, the National Trade Association for the RTO Industry, and sponsored by Rent Direct, a division of Nationwide, the country's largest retail buying group. My name is Ed Wynn III. I'm the General Counsel for the Association. This month, I want to talk about some of the features and benefits of the RTO transaction, specifically reinstatement rights. Stop. Consumer reinstatement rights are really unique in the consumer protection world. They only exist in RTO transactions. How they came to exist is an interesting story that began when the industry was negotiating with the Department of Consumer Affairs in South Carolina back in 1983, trying to get satisfactory rent-to-own legislation enacted in that state and to prevent the department from putting the RTO industry out of business in that state. We went round and round with the Department of Consumer Affairs negotiators over whether or not to include RTO legislation in the Uniform Consumer Credit Protection Act. South Carolina is one of the UCCC states, one of the 10 in the country, and the negotiators on the other side and RTO critics insisted that the RTO uh, rules be put into the South Carolina version of the UCCC. And we finally agreed to do that also. Then the argument came up that customers, if they are going to be in rent-to-own transactions and they pay for 77 weeks and then fail to make the 78th payment, the company is legally entitled to recover that property, the customer is left with nothing, and the company is free then to re-rent the merchandise. That was a real sticking point with the Department of Consumer Affairs. They, of course, wanted to give customers equity. We, of course, said with no obligation, there could be no equity. And what we finally settled on was the notion of reinstatement rights, that if the customer would, within a fairly short period of time, give us back our rental property, we would then give the customer an extended period of time to get caught up on his payments and continue with the rental agreement. That's the essence of how reinstatement rights work. Very early on, the initial period was quite short. It was two days. The customer had to give the property back within two days if he, paid, if he made weekly payments. He had to give the property back within five days if he made monthly payments. And then he got 21 days from the date of return to reinstate by getting caught up with all of his payments. In all of the state rent-to-own statutes, the initial reinstatement period is always fairly short. Uh, the longest reinstatement period in any state is 16 days in a couple of states, which is one half of a monthly payment. And that's the time period during which the customer can either get caught up on his payments or return the property and get extra time. Our argument in favor of reinstatement was that that's an income producing asset and unless customers are paying rent for that asset, it's sitting idle and companies uh, are losing money and eventually would have to go out of business. So we've got to get the property back fairly quickly and have the opportunity to rent that property to other people while this customer is getting back on his feet. The rent owned statutes, all of them say either that if the customer reinstates, the company will give him back the very same property if we still have it, or we'll give him back comparable uh, property of comparable quality and condition, something similar. Over time, while the initial reinstatement period, the period during which the customer can give back the property and get more time has always remained rather short. Over time, the second tier of the reinstatement period has lengthened. It went from 21 days to 30, from 30 to 45 days, from 45 days to 60, from 60 to 120. In some states now it's 180, and in some states it's a year. Over the past several years, the marketplace has taken over, and several companies will now offer customers lifetime reinstatement rights so that the customer, if he falls on hard times, can't continue making rental payments, but would nonetheless like to get ownership of that property eventually, if the customer can come back any time during the rest of his life and reinstate his original rental agreement, pick it up where he left off, and get the same, he may not be able to get the same property uh, after a number of years, that property may no longer exist, but he'll get comparable property uh, in good condition that suits him and be able to finish out his agreement. For example, if a customer has paid, say, 12 months on a big screen and has to give the property back and the original agreement was for 18 months, the customer can come back in and 
the company will provide him with comparable, a comparable big screen TV with six months left on it. He pays those six months out and he owns that TV. That's, that's, that's the essence of reinstatement and it is, a, it is a very effective marketing tool that is underutilized in the industry today. While reinstatement rights offer true value to rental customers, offering reinstatement rights need not be a huge expense for rental dealers. All rental dealers, unfortunately, have used property in the back room. So if a customer, on the facts that I just suggested, were to come in and demonstrate to the company that he had paid 12 months on a big screen TV, the company surely could find a used TV that it would be willing to rent for six months to ownership. And so if the company is creative and works with customers who want to reinstate, they ought to be able to get rid of used merchandise that's sitting idle in inventory, make a customer happy without having it cost the company a great deal of money. For companies that are offering reinstatement rights either lifetime or for a number of years, the circumstance is surely one day going to arise when a customer comes in and says, I want to reinstate my agreement for a VCR. And the company no longer has any VCRs and hasn't had VCRs for a decade. What then is the company going to do? Well, as I say, that issue has not yet arisen and when it does, I'm sure we will find some satisfactory product that will keep that customer happy. Reinstatement rights are just one of the many features and benefits of RTO transactions. It is my hope that you are fully explaining all of those benefits and features and that customers understand reinstatement rights and how they work to their benefit. Always remember to treat your customers like royalty. They deserve it. Until the next episode, my name is Ed Wynn III, April General Counsel.